Hey there, Emmanuel here from WebDev Fuel, and in today's video, you're going to learn exactly how to build a to do list application using Phoenix Live View. Now, here's the application that we're going to be building, but for now, this is still an HTML static page, so we still don't have all the Phoenix Live View logic into it, so this is now not working, but just so you can see exactly what the application is going to be look like and exactly what we're going to be building let's go over it first of all we're going to have the ability here to add a new to do item that we can add it here now for now again it doesn't work it's not appearing anything new underneath here the walk the dog item but we want to be able to not only add it then we also want to have the ability to update the item on this model and this model is being uh, basically shown using Alpine.js and if you don't know how to use Alpine.js inside of Phoenix Live View I'll leave a link in the comments below and on the top right corner so you can go ahead and watch that and learn how to use Alpine.js with Phoenix Live View in order to build JavaScript interactivity but with that in mind, we also want to update the item. So the item in here is going to show up. So for example, in that this case, it would be walk the dog. Now we can go ahead and close the model. And we also want to have the ability to delete the item right here. For now, again, nothing is happening on this application. And we also want to have the ability to click here on walk the dog and for it to uh, reduce the opacity it is going to have a line through on the text and that is going to basically mean that we're going to go to the database and toggle and set the done um, essentially the done state or the done um, let's say essentially we're going to essentially toggle this walk the dog between done and not done which basically is going to mean that in the database uh, the dumb column on the item table is going to be either false or true. Now, with this in mind, let's navigate to our project and let's see exactly how this is going to look like and what we're going to be building uh, in here. So I've gone ahead and I've set up a Phoenix Live View project. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, you can simply type uh, Phoenix PHX new and then as you can see here I've set up in inside this uh, folder and I've also passed here uh, dash dash live which means that it has gone ahead and set up everything that we need in terms of uh, our live application I've also gone ahead and done so you don't have to see me uh, I've also gone ahead as you can see and created here the entire HTML so you don't have to see me create just a bunch of HTML because that's um, beside the scope of this video and I've also gone ahead and removed here from the root all of the HTML that was inside of the body tag uh, and I've also gone ahead and clean up here clean up here the page live module um, and also again I've set up here all the HTML that we need now with this in mind we can now start creating our to-do list application inside of Phoenix Live View and the first thing that you want to do is to go ahead and first of all my, uh, create our items so in order to create our items uh, table inside the database and also be able to connect it to Phoenix Live View uh, via Ecto we're going to go ahead and write the following we need to write mix phx dot gen dot context and this essentially means that we're going to create not only a context but also a schema and the migration inside of Phoenix Live View and as you can see here I had it from uh, a previous test that I was doing but essentially what you want to do is write context and then the context is going to be to do's then uh, the um, inside the context we're going to have here the item then we're going to call this uh, items which is also going to be uh, the table name items and then the items are simply going to have a name which is a string so uh, again here if you come back to our application you can see here walk the dog is going to be the item name and then boolean is going to be the state of our to do item now with this in mind let's go ahead and run this command and as you can see now it has created here a bunch of things first of all uh, this the item schema as you can see in here then it has also gone ahead and created here our migration file uh, a bunch of tests with which we are not going to be working with for now and inside our to do's 
uh, our to do's file let's just search it for it this way as you can see this is essentially our context file that is going to then uh, make all the requests to the database that we're going to be needing in order to interact with the to do item now with this in mind let's go ahead and now uh, migrate the database because we want to actually create this items table inside our database and now it has been migrated as you can see we have here a mess that says create table items and that means that we now have our um, items table inside the database and let's just navigate back to our database and as you can see here we have now with uh, an items table with an ID a name done uh, done which is going to be either true or false and also inserted at and updated at which are uh, timestamps which are going to be using actually the inserted at in order to uh, essentially order our items by uh, insert that meaning that we're going to first of all see our last item added and then um, it is going to basically be in that order uh, so with this in mind let's go ahead and start creating everything that we need in order to make this work so with our migrations created we can now go ahead and navigate here to this file so uh, this is the to do's file it basically means that um, this is the to do's context file in which we're going to manipulate all of the items and we essentially want to replace this repo.all item with a query and that's because we want to again order by which is what i just mentioned uh, a couple of seconds before now in order to do that start by writing query equals from i in item that basically means that we're going to be selecting from the item and we need to access here the item with the i in order to order it and we're simply going to write in here order by and then we're going to add in here desk meaning that it is descendant uh, we're going to first of all grab the latest one that was created and then the last one um, and then the first one that was created so we want to see it in that order and then we're going to access here the i and we need to order it by inserted at now with this in mind as you can see it is now complaining that we didn't uh, we are not yet using it so instead of writing here uh, item we simply want to add in here our query and that's everything that we need to do inside of this file because all of these functions are exactly how we want them to be and with this in mind we can now navigate back to our page live and actually set up our socket assignments on the mount function now what i mean by this is that for now the socket is simply mounting without any assignments so basically without any data being sent here but we want to start now by uh, first of all adding our assignments now we first of all want to grab the items from our to do's context and in order to do that we need to first of all alias in here our to do list app dot to do's and then we can simply grab here from the to do's our list items function and now we can go ahead and assign it here now we're going to again assign to the socket a bunch of things and one of them and the first one is going to be the items which is going to be a list of all the items with the name and the done state and we next also want to add in here something that is going to be editing and if you're not sure for now what this is I'm going to explain it just a little bit but you're going to understand really what uh, this means and why we are doing this in just a minute once we get to this part but this essentially means that once we open in here our model we want to actually pass in the id and the name of the item that we're editing so that instead of having a bunch of different models on our html page and then have alpine js have to open each one and close each one of them which would be very complicated we'll simply once we click on the edit assign a new um, id and a new name here to the editing uh, map and that will make it to the editing struct and that will make it basically uh, easy for us to start editing our item uh, inside the model without again having to have a bunch of different models 
Now with this in mind, we can go ahead and save this. And now we have our amount function and we can go back here to the page uh, live and start adding in here a for uh, basically we want to add uh, a function that is going to loop over all the items and then is going to show in here our items instead of uh, showing here the walk the dog example which is static for now that we have so let's start by first of all adding here this thing right over here so you want to write this which basically means that we're opening um, a way for us to add a f uh, elixir code inside this template so as you can see it says here l -A -A -X, and that begs basically means that we're working inside a live template with uh, with phoenix but there's also this template which is only eex and uh, this essentially means that we can add elixir code inside of here and this is how again we're going to essentially uh, loop over all our items in order to grab each item and show it on our list now with this in mind let's start by first of all adding in here for item and then you want to add an arrow this way so essentially you want to add the arrow with a dash instead of an equal sign and then for each item inside the items list we want to do the following and we also want to make sure that we close it on the correct place down here so in order to do that we simply need to navigate here to the bottom and head in here an end and this essentially means that we're now looping over these items and showing here each item and we can now start adding now as you can see it is now complaining that the variable item is not being used and that's exactly what we're going to start doing so let's just change in here inside this tag and let's add inside this tag our item dot name now for now we don't have any item on our page so let's just go ahead and start the server so we can make sure that all of this is working And now if you navigate here back to our page as you can see we don't have any um, any item at the moment which means that uh, although it is looping over the items we are still not seeing any items but don't worry we're going to do that in just a second now let's navigate back to our page live module and we're going to start by first of all be before starting to add uh, our create item uh, handle event and all of the events that are going to handle the deletion the the update and the creation of new items we need to actually start by creating a couple of uh, a handful of private functions that are basically going to allow us to encapsulate the logic into functions uh, that are going to allow us to manipulate our items get an item by an id update an item and instead of having to write this over and over again we're simply going to encapsulate it again inside our functions now let's start by first of all writing here a function that is going to be called get item by id we're going to pass a list of items and we're also going to pass an id and with this we essentially want to be able to grab an item from uh, from a list of items now another reason that I'm doing this is that because we don't want to for example have to update something in the database and grab everything back from it because that would be very um, let's say very inefficient in terms of SQL queries and we don't have to have to essentially write things over and over again and have to go back to the database and ask for a bunch of information we simply want to for example once we update a new item we simply want to look for it inside our items list update with the new item that we've just updated and in that way essentially we want uh, we won't have to make a lot of expensive queries to our database and uh, our application is going to be a lot more efficient now with this in mind let's continue this was just a, um, a side thought so let's go ahead and write in here uh, enum.find and this essentially means that we're going to map over all uh, our items and then we're going to find uh, the first item that is going to match our function that we're going to pass in here and once it finds it stops looping through it and it just gives us back uh, the item that we're looking for so essentially we're going to get it here as you can see we're going to pass to the function the item that this is going to loop over 
and we want to essentially get the item that matches here our ID and we're going to pass the ID from a string to an int integer using here the string module and then to integer function because uh, when we grab the ID uh, from our template it is going to be uh, passed via the name attribute of the tag um, of the HTML tag and that means that this is going to be passed as a string so we want to actually transform it to an integer before we are actually able to compare and make sure that this is the one that we're looking for. Now, as you can see, it is now complaining that the function is unused. Don't worry about that for now. We now can continue and start adding in here another private function that we're going to call update item. And we're going to pass in here two attributes, two parameters, which are going to be items and new item. Now in here, we're also going to be using the enum module, but instead of using the find function, we're going to be using the map function. We're going to also pass in our items, and then we're going to simply use a function that is going to allow us to essentially look. Um, so essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to map over all of the items. If we find a match based on the new item ID, we're going to uh, send back the new item and if not we're simply going to send back the old item that we're passing in here and this essentially means that we can look and replace the new item on the same order uh, meaning that if we simply update the name it doesn't make any sense to put it back on the top of the list we want to make sure that it stays uh, on the same place that it was now with this in mind if the item that id is equal to our new item that ID we want to do this is actually like this we want to simply give back here our new item and if not we want to give back the item now again the reason we're doing this is because we don't have to write this over and over again and finally we're going to pass in here this one is a simple function we're simply going to get the items from the socket and instead of having to write the socket that assigns that items each time that we want to grab the items we'll simply also create in here a function and now we are ready to start adding our handle events functions that are going to allow us to essentially uh, handle the events that are coming here from our page live html template and then handling them here and then pass a new assignment with new items uh, and all those good stuff. Now, with that in mind, let's start by adding here our handle event function. Now, if you're not aware, this is the function that is going to allow us to handle events that we're going to pass in here, uh, whether that might be from a PHX click attribute or a PHX update attribute um, or a PHX submit attribute. Now, with this in mind, let's continue. In here we need to simply pass create item which is going to be the event name and then here we're going to simply pass our name so this is essentially the name of the new item that we're creating and then we also want to pass the socket so that we can then assign new items to it now we need to write in here with ok and new item and then add in here an arrow this way so it needs to be pointing to this part right over here with OK and new item and then in here we want to access our to do's context module and access the create item function and we're simply going to add here uh, essentially the attributes which are going to be name the name is going to be name which is the name that we pass in here and the done state is going to be false meaning that each time that someone adds a new item to the to-do list it is going to start by being first of all not done so that makes sense now with that in mind after uh, essentially this means that with this function uh, handled so with all of this done inside of this function then we'll, we're essentially going to pass in here the new item so this is the ok message and the new item we're then going to after this all goes well we're going to grab here the items 
using our get items function we're going to pass in the socket so we can essentially grab all of the items that are currently available to us and then we want to again define here the items so this is essentially going to overwrite what we've defined here on the top and we're essentially going to add in here the new item and the items now what this means is that we're creating a new list from this list right over here which is the items and then we're also going to go ahead and head and add to the beginning of the list a new item now again this means that we're going to create a new list with a new item added to its beginning now with all of this done we can simply go ahead and add here a no reply key and then we're going to assign to the socket and to the items key the items value that we've just created now let's just go ahead and see exactly why this is complaining we need to add in here the true and now it is not complaining anymore and we can now navigate back to our page live HTML template so we can actually go ahead and make all of this actually create a new item on our list but before we continue, I've actually realized that I've done here a small mistake. Instead of actually closing our loop in here, we actually want to close it here. So that, again, the model, just like I've explained before, the model doesn't actually get created a bunch of times. We're simply going to have one model that we're then going to pass in here using here our editing map, as you can see. Now with this in mind, make sure that you actually add this correctly for now. And with this in mind, we can now go ahead and create here our form that is going to allow us to create a new item. Now, just like I've explained before, we need to add in here an attribute of PHX submit, PHX dash submit. And this one is going to be, create, uh, be called create item because this one is also named create item now this is a form and inside the form we want to first of all add here to the input the name of name and this essentially means that the value from this input is going to be sent via in here on this map via the name key and we then can grab here the value which we've defined as name and let's go ahead and also add in here a placeholder that says item name just so that we can make sure that we know that this is where we add a new item now with all of this done we have everything that we need in order to create a new item and if if we did everything correctly we can go ahead and for example add in here walk the dog and as you can see we now have here our item which is called walk the dog if we want for example to remember to wash the dishes it would appear on top and now if we refresh here the page, as you can see, it appears in the same order because of the order by uh, which is descendant based on the inserted at uh, column on the items table. Now the next step is for us to be able to click here on this icon that uh, has a trash and we essentially want to delete this to do item right over here, which for now is not happening, but that's our goal. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. So we want to start by adding another handle event function in here and this time we're simply going to name it delete item and we're going to pass instead of passing the name we want to pass in the id because that's all that we need in order to look on the database and see what um, essentially what item we want to delete now with this in mind we also want to again get all of the items so that we can then update uh, on our view without having to go to the database and ask for for all the items once again and we, we also want to grab here from the get item by id our uh, item using this id so we can then go ahead and not only um, up, uh, delete it on the database but also delete it on our view and now we can actually go ahead and delete the item from the database so that we can then handle um, all of the logic after that deletion. 
So first of all, let's start by adding in here with OK and then deleted item so that we know that this one is a deleted item. Then we want to once again access our to do's module and then in here simply access our delete item function, pass in our item that we've defined here, um, that we've essentially grabbed from our items list using the ID. And then once this happens, once the, the item is deleted from the database using our to do context module, we can actually go ahead and filter um, this item that we've just deleted from the list without having to actually go ahead to the database and ask for, for a new list of items once again, because uh, that would again be very inefficient. Now, with this in mind, uh, I didn't had this function here on the bottom because we're not going to be using it more than once, but let's simply go ahead and add in here enum.filter, which is uh, essentially we're going to do what we've done in here, but instead of finding one item, we're simply going to uh, filter through all of the items and leave everything uh, out that is not matching. Now with this in mind, let's pass in here, first of all, our items, which is the list. And then here on the function, we're going to pass in here our item. So this is again going to map over all of the items inside the list. And then if the item that ID is different, so if it doesn't match our deleted item that ID, then we're going to filter it out, meaning that we're going to be removing only this one that we've deleted. And now let's go ahead and finally add in here, no reply. We're going to assign again to the socket and to the items key, a new value, which is going to be here, the items. And actually, just to make sure that all of this code is clean, let's actually go ahead and also create in here a new function that we'll call filter item. And we'll pass in here our items and our, uh, let's call it also deleted item. And inside of this, we can simply encapsulate all of the logic. So we can essentially send back that and now we can instead of having to have all of this code in here we can simply pass in here our items and also the deleted item now this makes the code look a bit simpler uh, cleaner and it also makes it simpler for us when we go in here and try to read all of the code uh, it makes it easy for us to understand what exactly happened here now with this in mind, we can now navigate back to our page live HTML template and we can add in here uh, essentially the logic that is going to allow us to click on that uh, trash uh, icon and then it will go ahead and delete our item. So we basically need to navigate here to our div uh, HTML tag and in here add two, two different attributes which are going to be first of all PHX click and this essentially means that once we click on this div tag, we want to invoke a handle event function uh, with the name of delete item, which is the name that we've defined uh, for the function that is going to delete the item. And then we also want to add in here PHX value ID. And this essentially means that uh, the value that we define inside of this is going to be uh, because we define here ID, if we've defined something else, it would not be ID. But since we've defined ID, this is essentially going to be the key and then the value that we pass in here. So again, the key is going to be ID and the value is going to be the ID of uh, the item that we're looping here uh, using our items list. Now, in order to access that, we're simply have, uh, we simply have to go ahead and type in here item.id using here the template structure that Phoenix provides us. And now with this in mind, we have everything that we need in order to go ahead and actually be able to delete an item. So item, let's call this one item to delete. We're going to go ahead and create it. And if you click here, as you can see, it has now gone ahead and deleted itself, which means that this is working. And again, this is not having to go back to the database and ask for new data from it, meaning that this is very efficient. 
but now just to make sure that I get the point across let's create for example uh, walk the cat instead of walk the dog and if we go ahead and delete the one that's here in the middle as you'll be able to see the order is going to be still uh, the same meaning that because we're using in here our filter function and we're mapping through all of them and then simply grabbing one that we don't want which in this case is the deleted item based on its ID this means that the list is still going to maintain its order now the next step is for us to add in here a handle event function that is going to allow us to essentially edit uh, update this editing map in here with the correct ID and the name of our uh, item that we want to update so this essentially means that once we click in here for example walk the dog this is not uh, going to have in here uh, an empty input so this is going to have uh, in here walk the dog in this case and it is also going to have um, a hidden um, input with the ID that we're then going to be able to pass in uh, to our code so that we can then go ahead and update uh, the item now with this in mind let's start by first of all only writing the logic for updating the editing and then next we can actually go ahead and create all of the logic to actually update the item itself now with this in mind let's go ahead and write in here update editing so essentially we're going to create a handle event function with the name of update editing and then in here we're simply going to pass in our id because using the id we can actually grab uh, we can grab the item from the from the list so we're going to first of all start by again grabbing from uh, by getting our uh, items using this get items function and then we're going to simply grab our editing item by using here the get item by id function and we're simply going to pass in here our uh, id so that we can actually go ahead and grab from the list only the item that we need and with this done we can go ahead and add in here uh, a new response with an assignment of uh, so we're going to assign to the editing key editing key the editing value and now we can navigate back to our uh, template and actually add everything that we need in order to make sure that once we click on this pencil right over here uh, it actually goes ahead and calls that handle event function and it updates our editing item so just like here with the trash and i'm actually going to go ahead and copy this value and paste it in here we can simply go ahead and update this again the same thing happens here as with the trash we simply want to pass in our uh, item id and in here instead of uh, having um, our delete item um, handle event name we're going to simply add in here update editing and now that we've added here the code that is going to allow us to essentially click here and update the value of the editing map we also want to go ahead and actually make sure that this is being reflected here on the input and then we can make sure that all of this is working correctly now in order to do that we simply need to add in here a value and the value is going to be editing which is the value which is we're essentially grabbing this from the assign here to the socket and then we're going to grab the editing dot name and just like I mentioned before we want to add in here a, a hidden input uh, the type is going to be number because the ID is a number and then we will go ahead and define in here just like with here the value of the editing name we're going to go ahead and define this value as uh, editing dot ID and now if we did all of this correctly let's just go ahead and refresh the page to make sure that all of this is working and as you can see we have here walk the cat and walk the dog in and if we try to go ahead and edit here walk the dog uh, yeah this is appearing two of them because we forgot here to add the hidden attribute 
Now let's go back to the page and if we click here on walk the dog, as you can see it says here walk the dog. If we go ahead and close this and try to edit walk the cat, it has now the walk the cat value and that's exactly what we want in order to then go ahead and be able to update this item. Now that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and do. We can now come here back to our page live module and actually create in here a new handle event function and we're going to name this one update item name since that's the only thing that we're actually updating and in here we're going to go ahead and pass our id and our name which again we're grabbing from the name attribute of the input tag and then we're also going to uh, again pass in the id and the name we're going to also pass the uh, the parameter of uh, the socket so we can then update the socket and in here we want to do a couple of things let's start by doing the same thing that we did up here i'm simply going to go ahead and copy this and paste it here we essentially want to grab the items and the item using this id right over here and then we're simply going to go ahead and do the following with uh, the ok message so if the update went correctly uh, essentially with here we're going to access the to do's module then the update item function and in here we simply need to pass in our current item which we've just gotten here from get item by id so we're going to add it in here and then we're also going to pass in here the new attributes which are which are simply going to be uh, is going to be a map with the key name and the value of name so with all of this done with if this all goes correctly inside of this function we can actually go ahead and update here the item using our update function update item function and as you can see in here we've created down here we simply need to pass in our items so we're going to grab it from here and it is also going to go ahead and overwrite the value from here and then we also want to pass the item that we're grabbing from here which was uh, with it also gone ahead and uh, overwritten the value from up here now we can do that and then we simply need to send back to the socket a new assignment with the items of items and then the editing we're going to simply pass in again uh, we're going to tell it that the name is empty and the value is uh, or actually we can actually go ahead and actually pass into the editing our new item uh, it doesn't hurt it doesn't make a it doesn't make a difference and actually if the model uh, took some time to close it would go ahead and still be the same it would not go ahead and clean uh, the value from the input so this is everything that we need in order to update the item name and we can now go ahead back to our template and add all of the logic that we need in here in order to update our item name luckily we have almost done all the work we need inside uh, of here during the previous part where we've updated our editing um, uh, key value so we can now in here go ahead and simply add in here phx submit so the attribute of phx submit meaning that we're going to invoke this handle event function with the name of update item name once we submit this form and we also need to go ahead and in here add the name of this one as name since this is the name of the item and we also want to pass in here the name of id since this hidden input is the id of the item and now if we navigate back to our application and instead of for example walking the cat we want to wash the dishes this should have it updated but it didn't let's just go ahead and see exactly what the error message is not a textual representation of an integer 
So this probably means that there's something wrong with our uh, ID. Let's just go ahead. The value is, as you can see in here, the value is not being defined um, using our template. So let's go back to the template. And in here, yeah, that's exactly right. We forgot to add in here this equals, which is then going to go ahead and add the hidden value. And because this uh, was incorrectly added, so the value is actually empty. This is giving us, uh, giving us an error in here saying that uh, this is not actually a representation, uh, a textual representation of an integer, meaning essentially that uh, we're passing something that's not, uh, for example, if we've passed in an one, a two, a three representation of an integer as a string, it will go ahead and transform it into an integer on this function uh, down here. But because we didn't pass it because of this error, we forgot to add the equals. That's why this is giving us that error message. So now the server is still running. And if you click in here, we should now be able to go ahead and click here and see, yes, the actual value now is four. So the ID is four. So now instead of again, walking the cat, if we uh, go ahead and update this to wash the dishes this is now updated here on a page and as you can see the order is still the same if you go ahead and for example add in here pay the bills and we for example also add in here let's say again walk the cat if we update here uh, pay the bills to pay the electricity or the uh, pay the water bill let's say it updates and it stays on the same order which is crucial we don't want to essentially have to neither go back to our uh, postgresql database and have to ask for all of these items again because for now there are only four but if you're developing a more complex application you want to make sure that you are not making uh, expensive queries to your database especially when you already have all of the data on your client that you need to be working with uh, but we also want to make sure that the order is still the same so again if we go back to pay the bills it still stays the same and we can still delete and all of the order is correct now with this in mind we now only need to add the logic that is going to allow us to essentially toggle our item from done to not done and then once we click, uh, once we essentially toggle it, we're going to add a class of done here to the text. So let me just search for it. We're going to add in here also a class of done if the item of done, uh, item that done is true, meaning that it is going to remove a bit of the opacity and uh, add a line through on the text. So I've already added all of that on the CSS. But with this in mind, let's go ahead and add the last handle event function that we need in order to make all of this, um, this entire to-do list application work using Phoenix Live View. Now, just like with the other ones, we simply need to add in here a name to the event and we're, called, uh, we're going to go ahead and call this one toggle event and we're going to simply pass in the ID also the socket and now inside of this function we can simply go ahead and also copy this and paste this in here so essentially we need to grab the items uh, using the get items function and also uh, the item that we want using this id using the get item by id function and now just like with the other functions we can go ahead and grab in here our item uh, with the update item function uh, successfully completed and in here just like with the um, update item function in here we first of all need to pass in the item and then the attributes now the attributes are simply going to be the following we want to add in here the done key with the value of the opposite of item that done now here's exactly what this means if we add in here the exclamation point before this item that done value appears in here it basically means that it is going to pass the opposite value 
Now, what this means, in other words, is that if we're passing in here, uh, once we toggle the item, if we pass in here an item that is not done, where the done is false, it is going to pass in done as true, which means that each time that we click on our item over here, it is going to either uh, mark it as done or not done. Now, with this in mind, once this function, uh, once the code goes through this function, we can actually go ahead and grab here our new list of items using the function that we define down there, meaning that we're going to be looking for an item using the item ID and then we're going to simply update the item and on this list it is simply going to appear as done without having to go back to the database and grab all of the values. And now we can simply add in here no reply and we're going to assign here to the socket the key of items and the value is going to be items. Now the last thing that we need to do is come back here to our application and here on the div tag we want to simply add um, essentially uh, an attribute that allows us to basically uh, click on this div tag so we're going to click on any part of this white uh, box in here and once we click on it this is going to toggle our uh, item now we essentially need to add the attribute of phx-click which means that once we click on this it is going to invoke the event based on the name and the name is going to be toggle item and now we also want to pass in essentially the ID of the item that we're dealing with in this situation based on the items uh, loop so let's go ahead and add also the attribute of phx value ID again this means that this is the key that we're going to pass in here and then uh, we're now going to go ahead and define the value just like with the example before we simply have to pass in here the item that id and now we need to only add one last thing which is our class name in case this is done so that we have a visual representation that the um, that the item was actually uh, toggled so if it is done it is going to remove a bit of the opacity and add the line through if it is not done it is going to stay exactly like it is right now so simply uh, go ahead and add in here the template uh, structure and inside our, in inside this we simply need to add if item that done so if it is done we want to do the following we want to add here the text of done now we're going to add in here a simple space uh, a space before the done uh, meaning that if this is not done this is simply going to appear as name and if it is done it is going to appear the name and then a space and the done meaning that we're going to have two different classes uh, so with this in mind let's go ahead save this and now if we navigate back to our application and let's say that we've already washed the dishes we can simply before we do that let's simply uh, refresh the page to make sure that all of this is working and if we've already washed the dishes and you click here as you can see it now says here wash the dishes but it has a line through the opacity is uh, a little bit uh, lower and if we navigate back to our database um, application here I'm using Beekeeper Studio in order to be able to uh, see uh, my database and navigate through it as you can see in here wash the dishes now the done column here on the wash the dishes is true meaning that uh, if someone is using this application and they've al already gone ahead and washed the dishes they can go ahead and uh, mark this as done as you can see it is pretty easy to build a to-do list application using Phoenix Live View and the cool part about it is that we don't have to have constant communication between a client and an API we can simply have in here the code that sends via the socket assignments to our uh, template and then we can access inside the template and the great part about it is that using this template uh, uh, essentially this template uh, pattern right here we can essentially access elixir code inside our html which makes it very very powerful and very easy for us to build uh, application using phoenix live view 
And again, uh, with all of this, we've essentially created an application where we are able to add a new item in here. We can also go ahead and edit the item. So if now this is the new item one, it uh, uh, appears here and it's updated. And we can also go ahead uh, and delete it. And we are also able to toggle and untoggle items you, uh, inside this to-do list application using Phoenix Live View. Now, if you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful and if you taught you uh, a bit about Phoenix Live View and how to build applications using Phoenix Live View, uh, leave a like below in the comments. Also, let me know in the comments what you liked about this video and also videos that you would like me to make in the future teaching different things about Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix framework or Phoenix Live View and also subscribe to get notified of future content.